On the edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go. Welcome to KWTV 008, installing your own Linux server. Brought to you by ShinyWhiteBox.com. Hey guys and girls, welcome to KWTV 008, installing your own Linux server. Today I am going to rob you of a myth. I am going to steal a delusional idea from your mind. I am going to debunk an urban myth that is still out there. Namely, that installing a Linux server is hard. It's not. Really. What we're going to do today is going to present you with part one of a series on how to install your own Linux server and do a few basic things without getting too deep and dirty into the command line. You know how we do it down here at the Nightcast or at, at, and at Nightwise TV. Simple, plain, letting technology work for you. So that's exactly what we're going to do. In today's episode, we are going to take a version of Ubuntu Linux, namely the 8.10 Server Edition, and install it in a virtual machine. Now, you can do this in a virtual machine, or you can do this on just about any piece of hardware that you have at home. So, if you still have a Pentium 3 with 128 megabytes of RAM, they'll probably do it. You can even drag the old clunker from the basement, or you can even try it on the brand new unky funky PC that you have, but for general server tasks for one or two people, an old clunker will do just fine. So, let's go down to the basement, dig up that old Pentium 3 with 128 megabytes of RAM that has been discarded into oblivion by the new installations of Vista, and let it work for us. Let's go install Ubuntu. After we have installed the CD, it will ask us which language we want to use for the initial installation. We choose English and hit enter, selecting the Install Ubuntu Server option. The CD will immediately start up and you'll be able to follow the text-based mode install, which isn't all that hard, so don't panic. Choose the language of the install, in this case it's English for me, and choose your country. If it's not the United States, you might want to choose a different country, like me, Europe and Belgium. It will ask you to detect a keyboard layout. If you don't know your layout, you can let it be detected automatically or you can select it manually, as I've done here. I've selected a Belgian keyboard. It will check the CD-ROM and see if it's able to install from there and will uh, pull in any additional components. Next it will detect the network hardware, so make sure that your network cable is plugged in because it will automatically pick up a DHCP IP address. This is important for the updating. Choose your host name, but don't choose a host name with a space in it. Not Ubuntu server, but just server or any name you want and preferably keep it under eight characters just for compat compatibility. Click continue and it will look at the disks and it will give you a partition proposal. In this case, we will choose guided, use the entire disk, because we're going to use the entire hard drive. And select yes when Ubuntu gives you the installation proposal, and the partitioning proposal that is. After that, the Ubuntu system will start installing the base system after formatting the partitions. After the base system is installed, you will be prompted for your username. Now, choose this username very carefully because this is one with pseudo rights, so with administrator rights. Choose the name of the new user. This could be your personal name. And next, choose a username for that account. Then choose a password. Make sure that you take something that is pretty complicated. Re-enter the password. And it will ask you for a private encrypted directory. This means that your home folder is going to be encrypted. And in order to decrypt it, you are going to need a pretty long password. So choose a passphrase, read the text that's on the screen, choose a passphrase and enter it here. Make sure that it's pretty complicated and that it's not the same as the account password. Re-enter the passphrase. And next up, the installation will commence. It will be scanning the CD-ROM and the mirror on the internet, if you're using a proxy, 
enter it here and it will start installing the system. After everything is installed it will scan the mirror for updates and will ask you how to manage the security updates not automatically or automatically and the functionality with landscape is something to do with canonical so I would suggest install the updates automatically. Next up you'll be able to select what options you want in your server. Do you want to set it as a DNS server, a LAMP server which is a web server, a mail server, an open SSH server for terminal, Postgres SQL, a print server, a file server, Tomcat Java server or even a virtual machine server. You can select some of these options and all the packages and configuration files will be pre-installed. We're going to start off with the LAMP server and an open SSH server. That way we can use it as a web server and work with it from the terminal. Because we have a web server with a database server attached, we will also need a root password for the SQL database server to access all the databases and create new ones. Make sure that you use a complicated password that is different from your account password. After that we have arrived on the, uh, well, the finishing up of the installation and Ubuntu will ask us whether we want to reboot the system. Please remove your CD-ROM and hit continue and let the system reboot. Please hang up and try again. Now we'll see the server boot for the first time. The cool thing with Linux is that you can actually see every service and every setting start up. So if there's a problem, you will immediately see where it is before the server even starts up completely. As you can see, it's activating the swap file, it's configuring the network interfacing, it's uh, going to start up the SQL server. All the services are going up and you can follow right along. Now, in this version, we have chosen for a command line interface only, but in the next episodes of the Nightcast, we will start installing software and even um, putting in a graphical user interface. Until then, just enter the username that we selected. Enter your password. and your Ubuntu server is ready. Well, that's about all we have time for on KWTV008, installing your Ubuntu server. I hope you saw that it's not that hard to do. Just follow along, click where we click, press where we press, and type where we type, and you'll be fine. Next episode, we're going to see if we can install it uh, as an SSH server. We can see if we can use PuTTY to uh, connect to that server. And we'll also talk about how to set up a static IP address. That and more super simple and letting technology work for you is, of course, what we love to do down here at KWTV. So if you have feedback or questions, please, you know where to go. Nightwise at nightwise.com is the email address. You can find me on Facebook. The name is Nightwise. And you can always go to www.nightwise.com that's the website where you'll find the KWTV episodes the KC podcast a nightcast podcast that is and of course all the other articles so until then let technology work for you and have a nice week <laughs>